All right, welcome back to the calculator tutorial. All right, so let's go to main activity Java. Now this is where we're going to be placing all of our code. And let's click these three dots here. These are our imports and we're going to need to add a few more. Um, let's write a little note here saying that we need some additional, uh, let's see, imports and say dependencies, whatever. And let's import um, Android. Wow, I can't type today. Android view dot view. And this is needed um, basically whenever you need to use widgets. Okay, import Android. Uh, it's a widget, so we're using widgets, obviously. Dot button because we're using buttons and import another widget and our um, text view is what it's called for our little output uh, let's see Okay, so that's that after we add our semicolon here. Let's make these look nice. Okay, so where are we going to put our code? Right over here we have the on create, on create options menu, and items selected, whatever. So basically we want to put all of our code in the on create, so as soon as it's created, we want to have all of our buttons available to be clicked, so we're going to put everything right within this method here, the onCreate method. So the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to reference our buttons. So we'll type button, which is the class, and we're going to name it um, our object something. So what I like to name them is the same thing as what we have them set for the ID. and I'm not exactly sure if this is good practice or not, but it doesn't hurt anything, and it makes it a little bit easier to program because you know what you're working with. Um, so equals, and let's put find view by ID, and we're going to put in resource, which is R, and then ID dot button zero. So if you named it maybe like something else um, as far as the ID goes, uh, you're going to want to name it that, put a semicolon, and you're going to get an error. Let me show you what it says here, if I can get it. Required Android widget button found Android view view. So what this is saying is these two aren't compatible. So what we need to do is we need to typecast it to a button. And there you have it. Now we're all set up. We can reference um, button zero object. So let's do the same thing for the rest of them. All right, we've got everything set up. We've got buttons zero through nine. We've got buttons clear and equal and our add, subtract, multiply and divide. So let's go ahead and create an event handler. So we want when we click button zero, we want the screen, our, our output field to say zero. So let's go ahead and say button zero event handler and we'll start by saying button zero that's the button we're, the object we're working with and we want to set on click and there it is set on click listener and hit enter and the next thing we need to have is an interface so we'll start typing a note saying uh, button zero interface and it needs to be like this. New button dot on click listener. Okay, and let's go ahead and have opening and closing brackets. And then within this interface, we're going to have uh, button zero, the callback method. All right, and this is where we're going to put the code as to what happens when we click. 
And so public void on click uh, view v and open and closing brackets. And we're going to put text view because that's what we're working with now. Text view. And our object name is going to be output. Um, output. You can name it whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's just an object uh, variable name. And we're going to say, remember we have to type cast, so text view find view by ID, our resource ID, and then uh, let's see, what did we name it? Let's go back and check. Oh, forgot we didn't give it a name. We can go here and double click and it'll say edit text. Okay, so edit text is the name of that ID. Let's go back oh, to our Java code, sorry, and edit text. Okay, put a semicolon. And our output, our object, dot append, and we're just going to append zero. All right. So before we go too far, let's go ahead and save it, and we'll run this. The only button we set an uh, event listener for is zero, so let's click that, and it works. Perfect. All right. So let's go back to our code. And we'll copy this. Go ahead and copy. Now we're going to do the same thing here for buttons 1 through 9. All right, once we've gotten through button 9, go ahead and save it, and we're going to run it again. We just want to make sure all of our code works fine. We want to make sure that all of our buttons give us the correct digits to the screen. All right. There we go. Perfect. All right, so let's go back to our code now, and let's create the clear one. All right. So, button C, C, C. And this time we don't want to append. We want to do a thing called set text, which will clear the screen. All right, at the top of our code, we're going to create a few different variables. Um, so basically, we want to temporarily hold um, our sign, whether it be plus, minus, you know, uh, multiply, divide. So let's type, um, let's do public string uh, sign. And we're going to set it, you know, equal to nothing for now. Let's do public string. Um, let's see, what do I have? Let's do total. And public uh, double. And let's do temp. Uh, what do we want to name it? Just uh, how about temp double? And temp double two. So this is going to hold the first string that we uh, put in. And then this is going to hold the second string we put in after the sign is created. You'll understand as we go through a little bit further. Let's go down to the bottom. Okay. All right. Let's copy this again. Let's do button A for addition. Okay. Let me. I don't like that thing. So. All right. Okay, perfect. So here we have text view output, text view, find it by ID, which is fine. So we have the output text. And let's see, now we need to set our first temp double. So when someone hits the plus sign, it's going to take the number that they have in there and set that to our temporary double. So temp 
double is equal to double dot parse double and then our output of course and so now we're actually going to be getting the text that's within it and this is a way to um, first we have to get it as a string and then we can parse it to a double so that's kind of fun um, let's see that two string semicolon and then we're going to change it back to a blank um, output field after we hit the plus sign and I, I understand that this isn't the best calculator in the world however if we were to create a good calculator um, there'd be a lot of different algor algorithms that we'd have to create and I don't you know I don't want to do that in this tutorial that's not what this is about so we're just trying to make a simple app that does a few simple things using widgets and etc so why do all that so sign equals plus all right and we're going to ahead and copy this uh, for our subtract multiply and divide so go ahead and do that real quick all right so we have our add subtract multiply and divide event handlers and make sure that you change the signs within here especially this one to if you used M obviously we're not going to use sign M um, or the X that we used before it's got to be the asterisk for multiply and the last one that we have to do the last event handler we need to create is for the equal sign now this one takes a little while so I'm actually going to provide the code for you guys all right so let's copy this And we'll paste it right in here. All right, I'm not using output text as my ID. I'm using edit text. Okay, so what this code does is when we click on the equal sign, it's going to set whatever we have in our edit text uh, box to our second double. And then depending on the sign that we clicked earlier, whether it be plus, minus, multiply, or divide, let's say divide. It's going to test that second double first to see if it's equal to zero. It's going to give you, of course, an error if it is zero because you can't divide by zero. Otherwise, though, it's going to take your first double and divide it by your second double. It's going to convert it to a string, and then it's going to set it to the output text. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then lastly, we want to reset our sign so that way if we want to take what we have in the output screen and say we first we divide it then we want to multiply it um, then we can use another sign so let's do five and say let's divide by let's divide by zero first we'll test that equals cannot divide by zero so let's clear the screen 25 and multiplied by 9 equals 255 and then if you want to say divide it by 3 you can do that equals 75 all right, so I'm going to move this down. In case you guys want to just copy this code, go ahead and pause it. Otherwise, let's go back to activity main to XML because when I showed you um, in the first video, um, kind of like the background color was changed. So if you click on the background here, we can go over and let's see. Where is it? Oh, right here in front of my face background if you click these little three dots you can go it probably starts on project for you guys you can go over to color you can change it to be whatever you want however keep in mind that your text and here's black so unless you want to change that too I mean obviously you wouldn't want to set it to set it to black because your text wouldn't show up so I mean you can change it to like maybe lime green some shade of green I guess click OK and I'll change the background so that's how I did that. Alrighty, well, that concludes our calculator tutorial.